Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our session. Thank you for coming along. Um, my name is Louise Ridley. I'm a digital <coughs> editor, and I've worked at brands like HuffPost and BuzzFeed. Um, this is going to be a slightly different Meet the Controller session from what you might have seen if you've been here uh, yesterday, because it's a series of firsts. So it's my first time at Edinburgh at the CB Festival. It's Fiona's first time here as this role uh, new controller of BBC Three. And we're also going to have some firsts to show you in terms of the exciting clips we're going to be showing you during the session. Um, <laughs> Fiona's taking some pictures of everyone wave. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so in other Meet the Controllers, <laughs> in other Meet the Controller sessions, people have been looking back on the year gone, but of course Fiona hasn't even had a complete year. Um, she's been in the role eight months uh, after joining from BBC Studios, where she was the head of the documentary unit. Before that, she was the digital director of BBC News, and she's also been the head of current affairs and the head of documentaries and features for BBC Three. And she took over from Damien and Kavanagh. Um, so as I say, we're going to have a bit of a twist to this session. First, we're going to do a sort of overview and we're going to get to the logistics of how to pitch to Fiona, all the kinds of things you ought to know. And then we're going to get a few familiar faces to put some interesting statements about BBC Three to Fiona and we're going to ask her to respond to them. Um, a bit of housekeeping for all of you in the audience. Uh, if you want to submit any questions to Fiona, please do that through the festival app. You can start doing that now. I think we've actually already had questions in, which is very promising. Please <coughs> submit them throughout, and then we're going to go through some of them at the end of the session. So first, let's take a look at some highlights from BBC Three. Hurry up and sit down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fiona, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this is the last time I'm going to mention Damien, your predecessor, yes, but that's fine. looking at that fantastic showreel, yeah. how much of that is, is a hangover from his time and how much of it have you actually been able to be involved in and put your fingerprints on? Um, I don't think about it. I think BBC Three is a thing and it's a big team. These channels are not run by individuals and I just, you know, we're all passing through these seats for a short period of time. That's the honesty of these things. So, you know, there's a big team behind all of that content and it isn't just Damien either. So, you know, we've half a team in Birmingham, half a team in London, and they're very much responsible for all of that. As are people in this room, it's the people, they're the people who make the, the, um, make the content for us. Um, I would say probably the biggest uh, couple of notes on that, uh, more in relation to me, is uh, which we'll get into talking about, I have changed a bit more about the how we plan, what we do on social to drive the audience for the longer form content and the home for that content, which everybody who will have met me knows now is clearly BBC iPlayer is the, the core home. Because that's been the sort of evolution, evolutionary thing that's happened since my arrival. And secondly, I'm a bit more obsessed about the makeup of the under 35 audience, which we can we can get into, which is is sort of spreading out the decisions of the editorial we hit a bit a bit more a bit more widely. Mm. And again, thinking about that big range of shows we just mm. saw little extracts from, is there one or perhaps two that sort of stand out to you and and say you know that's the kind of thing you want to BBC Three to keep doing and build on? What what sort of? Um, well, I. I oh, there's quite a few there. Um, I would mention Hot Properties an interest an interesting one. We're going into series two on that. Uh, you know, Young Philly's a great talent, and we're also doing Fire Entertainment, which we'll get into talking about. There's been a big investment in entertainment money, and that will continue. He's he's piloting a new show, presenting a new show called Hush Money with us. But um, the great thing about that show was it was very unfiltered and very, you know, great fun. We just want to have fun. And it went all around the country. And on iPlayer, it skewed really young. So, you know, it brought in some really young under 25s to iPlayer who hadn't been to iPlayer in the last 13 weeks, which is one of the sort of light up things that we look at. Right. It's a very, very valuable audience and an audience we want to sort of stick to. So, um, you know, it's interesting to think about how how it did that mm. and not to put you on the spot mm. but mm. um how would you sum up your kind of vision for bbc3 in five words, Ooh, five words. words. <laughs> um outspoken no bullshit uh across the uk is that six words it's five yeah okay, there you go. <laughs> <At least> five. <laughs> great thank you very much um and let's get to the practicality so i know lots of you will be interested in how you can get programs pitched uh, to Fiona. How does the pitching process work under you? Uh, well, so I've mentioned that we're in two bases, which a lot of you will know. So um, Naz Hack, who's here, and Carl uh, Callum lead the team of commissioners that come out of 
Birmingham, and that's the commissioning of half an hour and under. So you can contact them directly. Um, you know, we'll get into the, the kind, they did Supercar, Superfam, that was in that. Uh, they're also doing House Share, which is a show um, that we're announcing today. Um, and so they're the half an hour and under team. And then in, in London, I'm, I'm based in London. I go to Birmingham every other week, but we work through the main genres, which everybody works through for any content outlet. But to be honest, a lot of people email me directly. I'm not welcoming everybody emailing me all the time, <laughs> but people will know I am, um, you know, because there's always the question of speed and decisions. And, and um, I try and make fast decisions, even if I can't spell and even if I send a really <laughs> shit email that's one sentence long. Um, I try and because I know people appreciate fast answers, but you know we the genre we have meetings every week and every but the, the thing is I'm trying to look at a channel in a sort of three month or a six month basket. What's the editorial spread? What's the audience appeal we're offering in that three to six month basket in the third reel of iPlayer where we live? Um, so I'm not you know we're not living and breathing a weekly commissioning beat because that's not the way the audience consume the content. The younger audience come to iPlayer, you know, as a sort of weekly fortnightly uh, or less infrequent habit. So I've got to think in a longer time frame. Mm. So um, that's why some people in this room who will, will be able to get into examples later know that conversations go on for a while mm. um, whilst we're trying to figure out that spread. And a lot of people in this room will know that I've gone mad on dating and we have far too many dating shows and don't talk to you about <laughs> this for six months. And kind of picking up on the idea of communication yeah. and speed, yeah. there was a survey last year um, from the Edinburgh Television yes. Festival, which wasn't BBC Three, it was the whole of the BBC, yeah. uh, came worst in terms yeah. of response time to meetings and acknowledgements. Are you able to move more quickly? Are you trying to really get those meetings in? I think, well, so I've met with over 80 indies in the seven months that I have started this job, um, which was, you know, a lot of great conversations to try and, you know, for people to hear from me directly how I'm thinking about that audience. Um, we've done, in the commissioning meetings, we're ramping through things quickly and people in this room will know there's been a lot of no's, there's been a lot of no's um, and a lot of thinking. So we are moving, I think we are moving quickly, but sometimes, um, you know, yesterday we got the money through a circuitous route um, for a new mini series that Duncan Gray is doing in this room. Duncan's here somewhere. And he was very patient because, you know, we really wanted to do it and it was, didn't fit. The, the money was complicated. And we talked about it for like six or seven weeks. And, you know, we got it commissioned in the end because sometimes putting the money together just takes a bit of time. Mm. So, um, you know, people have different experiences. But at the end of the day, I have to say, it's a very competitive environment. We don't have an infinite sum of money. You know, we have to make, we're trying to make strategic decisions and we are a small youth outfit in a very competitive national and global landscape. Mm, that makes sense. Mm. Um, so now we're moving on to our things not to say to Fiona uh, yeah. section, which is going to be I'm not fun. Saying. I don't know any of that. <laughs> she doesn't know what. Yeah what they're going to be. Um, we've got some help from some recognisable faces from BBC Three <clears throat> who are going to help me out with the interview and they're going to put statements uh, to Fiona and we will see what she thinks of them. Uh, they have some pretty interesting things to say. So we will start off with our first clip, please. Don't they just steal all their content from Vice? So Fiona, don't you just steal all your content from Vice? Yeah, I would say Glow Up's very Vice-like, um, as is Eating With My Ex, um, as is, I am taking the piss here, I hope you get it, <laughs> um, as is, you know, RuPaul. Um, I guess this goes down to my thinking about the under 35 audience. Um, and it's, you know, there's not just a bunch of under 35s out there, there's many types of people in that group. So, you know, the city dwellers, there's uh, people who live in, you know, smaller towns, people who live in the countryside. Not everybody's cool. Not everybody lives in a city. Not everybody's a millennial. You know, not everybody's got a beard and tattoos. And if you want to have a big <laughs> audience, you have to appeal to all those groups and sensibilities and plan your content to reach them. <laughs> so, you know, um, one could, you know, Years ago, to cut through on digital platforms, that sounds like decades ago, but I mean, a few years ago, you know, it's, it's, it's the drugs, it's the sex that, you know, rates well on the third party platforms and you pull through from that, hence the rise of vice. But, mm. but 
you know, dig digital platforms and what people are looking for has evolved and it's broader now. Hence, we're into the world of, you know, Glow Up, Eating with My Ex, RuPaul. You know, we've got a, a clutch of other shows, you know, Hot Property. We're broadening um, our appeal and our relevance to under 35s beyond that sort of sex, cool, grime thing right. that, you know, that, that this vice sort of point, I would And say. who do you see as your direct competitors? I think um, the biggest c competitor and the easiest way for me to think about it is, t is time, people's time. Like in that demographic, you know, everybody knows that the Ofcom thing about more than half of households now have um, a streaming service. But really, the rise of gaming, Fortnite, TikTok, music streaming, that's how people are spending their time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have to have a very clear offer. And what I'm trying to do is have a very clear offer so people know I come to BBC Three to spend my very valuable time to get this and to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is there for me. And we will therefore have to offer a batch of things that will offer to different groups things that they value. So RuPaul's part of that. Eating with my ex. I'm going to keep on banging on about it. Um, <laughs> but we want to have a clutch, a sort of a, an evolving and revolving family of returning brands that make up the identity of BBC Three. Mm. And they, some shows will come in and out of that family as we go through the next couple of years. I'm not sure I should let you get away with mm. saying time is your biggest competitor. Yeah. Are there any other kind of content producing brands you at least see BBC Three in the same sort of I would say gaming. As. Gaming is probably, okay. I'm, you know, I'm interested in young men. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, I would say that's probably my weakest. Mm. Uh, <laughs> doing a bigger hole. In <laughs> anyway, we have an issue it. with shows that appeal to young men. Okay, interesting. Leave it at that. Good, good tip there. Um, and in terms of, you know, you guys are uh, mainly online, or mm. sort of, except that slot we'll discuss later, or now on linear. Um, do you look at online stats and kind of crunch those numbers to decide what works, or do you go with a kind yes. of gut feeling? No, we, because um, I say there's there's a there's a team of us, and it goes back to the beginning that there's sort of a leadership team of eight in BBC Three on the editorial side. You know, Naz and Carl are half an hour and under. Laura runs BBC Birmingham in-house commissioning. There's Joe, who's the editorial exec for BBC Three. There's Simon on iPad. And we literally sit in a room and discuss these things together. And then there's the genre commission. So it's, a, you know, if somebody really wants to do something, they do it. It's, it's not a sort of dictatorship. People have strong feelings and, and you know, we voice them, but we do look a lot at iPlayer. That's the big change. We do look a lot about an iPlayer data because it's just, it's silly to ignore it mm -hmm. because it tells you, you know, um, how long people watch things for. So for example, in the Hometown series, which did really well for us, the iPlayer information tells us that people watched a lot of the episodes the whole way through and progressed the whole way through the series. That's very useful to know in terms of the format in which the way that that show was made because mm -hmm. we would do that again because we know it worked. Yeah. And like for, likewise for Hot Property, it tells us that under 25s were watching and therefore it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indi indicative thing rather than mm -hmm. a sort of rule de, ruler to beat us with. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's, um, it's, it's, it's really useful. And it just cuts through the bullshit of hierarchies at some time because it's there to help the conversations. Thank you. And let's move on to our next clip from a familiar face. Aren't they just trying to be cool? That was Ellie Flynn uh, she from, she said, aren't you just trying to be cool? Oh, right, okay. Quite fast. <laughs> um, <laughs> as I've already said, um, you know, as I said, under 35 audience, it's a lot of people, not everybody's cool, not everybody has beards and tattoos, not everybody wants <laughs> to take drugs, not everybody lives in a big city. So, and if you just limit yourself to trying to be cool, you're only going to get a certain proportion of the under 35 audience. So you're limiting yourself. So I would say, um, you know, we're, we're just definitely, that's not, not the way we operate at all. And in the broad spread of casting, uh, like Heartbreak Holiday or Hot Property or Eating With My Ex, in the kind of people, that's that's not, you know, the, the driving image. Mm. And if you look at, and I do bang on a lot about the images of iPlayer because, again, people haven't got much time, so they're not reading your reviews, your pick of the day and all that. You know, they're looking, they're scanning iPlayer and scanning social, and that's where you're your image to sell your show is really key because that's where you're going to hook somebody to go, yeah, 
I want to watch that. So eating with my ex was great because it was what it said on the tin. It was, you know, you were looking at couples that looked like you and therefore you're thinking, actually, I'm going to watch that. And that show um, did really well. It skewed higher than average for us at under 35. It was a 60 odd percent of the audience were under 35. Nearly 6 million people have watched it on iPlayer and people really whizzed through a lot of it, have mm. stayed with it to watch it. And even more was Glow Up, which yes. were about just finished casting on series two. Fantastic. And um, so BBC Three doesn't stand for just being cool, something much broader. Mm. Um, I know you've got this idea about adding value. Can you tell yeah. me about what that really means in practice? Yeah, so it goes back to the multiplicity of audiences and the on, on people types in the under 35 um, groups. And, you know, again, why are you going to come to BBC Three? Why are you going to bother? Why is it going to appeal to you when there's so many things you could you could be doing with your time? And it's this idea of what are you giving the audience that it's worthwhile engaging with the content on? And, for, you know, something we talk a lot about is uh, in that age group. And for all of us in this modern world, everybody's trying to have an identity, shape their identity. Everybody has aspiration, especially in these times. Everybody wants to make it. Everybody wants to be their, their best self, be who they want to be. And um, that is, so we're trying to find the value in a show, like even Eating With My Ex, when you start to watch it. Has anybody here not watched Eating With My Ex? One person. Okay, right, you need to start watching it because then you can start watching it and you literally go, Oh my God, I used to do that. Oh my God, that's what he used to do to me. Oh my God. And you start to, you start to learn things um, about relationships and that's kind of valuable. Mm. RuPaul, I've watched the whole series. I mean, when you, it, there is so, there will be, you know, a very young demographic that will watch RuPaul that will get great support and inspiration from what the things that Ru and Michelle say in that show. Mm. And until you, I mean, it's, it, and that is the value of why the audience will stick with it. Mm. Um, and that's what we're trying to offer. So another show we're, we're, um, we're mentioning today, is, uh, which 2-4 are making, is called Skin. And it's about people with skin conditions, you know, going through a transformative treatment process with some experts. And the, the way we did that show is interesting is um, when it was pitched, we did a social listening exercise. So we did a lot of research on in that demographic, what are people talking about online in relation to skin? So it's what are they talking about? What conditions are they talking about? What are the top conditions they're talking about? How are they talking about them? What language do they use? What parts of the country are they talking about it in? And in what's, what's their attitude towards the type of treatment that they positively want to? And then we fed that into the research for the show. Um, and again, that's value because people, everybody, you know, skin is all about your identity and how you feel about yourself mm. and, you know, your self-worth. And so people will watch that show because they can identify with what's going to come out of it. I haven't seen any of it yet. But um, that's the, the thinking about the value. Mm. And you've got to spread the value because if you have all the shows gathered in the one value area, you're just too, you're not going to spread the audience. Mm. Thinking about um, sort of young audiences, mm. uh, you, we saw in the BBC Two similar session yesterday, yeah. BBC Two being challenged about losing young yeah. viewers. Um, do you think that means BBC Three is more important? Is there sort of a weight on your shoulders to bring There's definitely in? pressure. It's definitely sick in the stomach, like <laughs> especially in relation to, <laughs> there are, to things to come. Um, yeah, like it's, it's really hard. Like, uh, I mean, everybody knows that um, I've just mentioned the competition from gaming, the competition from streaming. <laughs> You know, linear TV audiences, everybody knows, are, are, are declining, but are still sizable in overall number terms. So you, the pressure, you definitely feel the pressure because, again, we're not a mega channel. We're not, mm. a, a, we're not a channel. We do, we know we have a certain sum of money, although I'm vibing it that, please, can we have more money? <laughs> um, uh, so definitely feel the pressure to make the right decisions and to drive, you know, basically to, to reach, to reach, the audience, like the, on the two positive notes of that, you know, last night when I was locked in my hotel room reading notes for this session, um, this guy emailed me and I'm like, who is this? I still haven't quite figured out who he is, but he, he's based in Manchester and he, he linked in me actually. 
this young guy, and he said, I want to present, to recreate this for you again, I want to present a weekly RuPaul review show. I know how to do it. I'm going to do it. Please, please, please let me do it. And he's emailed me like three times overnight. And you're thinking, God, this is, you know, that oh, this content, this show means so much to some mm. people that that is real value that we will deliver to them and they really care and the responsibility of not as we would say don't fuck it up <laughs> is big yeah and um, yeah. you said just just then yeah. that bbc3 is not a channel you said yeah. Do you see it as a channel a brand don't like, what it is it channel. don't <laughs> see a channel um i think about it it's it's um what is it we talk about the brand a lot i you know we do drama, we do comedy, we do factual, we do social. So in that way, we are a service. But I sort of think we're, we're a brand. We, and we did a lot of brand research recently. And on the plus side, they find that there still has strong brand value and people know what we are and what we do in that audience, which is positive. So, you know, it's a set of values. We're a set of values that, um, that people and, and content creators are, I think, are attracted by. So the other thing is, which we, we, there's a lot of interest, you know, really good stuff going on where people have come forth who want to work with us, which we can't announce yet. And I'm kind of like, wow, they want to work with us. That's pretty amazing. Mm. So. I think we've got a clip show now, which is one of our firsts, which is yeah. speaks to what you're talking about in terms of adding value and connecting, yeah. which is a documentary fronted by Jesse Nelson from Little Mix. Be moving and revealing. Yes, so that's been a long it's time in the, in the making. And Max Gogarty and David Brindley have, you know, you know, worked with Jesse on that. So it's really, really powerful. And she had very strong feelings and um, view on what she wanted to say, and what, and that's really great. That's what you know we want. We want to just people to have their say it the way they want to say it. Yeah, which is going to be good. Brilliant. Um, and we can move on to our next uh, thing not to say to you from our next clip. And they might pretend to be young, but they just run by old white people. The lovely Ben Sam. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I think I've sort of talked about this. There's, um, you know, we're not a dictatorship and we're all just passing through. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's, a, there's a gang of us who make the decisions and, you know, Naz and Carl in, in Birmingham. Navi's our head of social. You know, Joe Smith, a, a exec produced Hot Property and um, Heartbreak Holiday. So there's a, I got a lot of you probably have, have met, you know, I do try to bring everybody else into meetings as well. So there's a, there's a big team there. And for the in-house productions like Hot Property, Heartbreak Holiday, that's a whole in-house production team who are all, the whole point of that in-house team is they're all really young and they're on set shooting this stuff themselves and they're in the driving seat. You know, I don't do mega notes unless Simon Andrews in the room with me. No, he's not here, I forgot. Um, so it, they're, you know, I, I sort of have a light, light touch and all of that. And on top of that, in the way that the Jessie film, you know, it's all about her voice and the story she wanted to tell. That's what we're trying to do with other pieces of content. So, you know, with Kill By My Fame, which um, is a factual drama that we're doing, Reggie Yates, who um, obviously has a long history on doing docs on BBC Three very successfully, that's going to be his first uh, writing gig. Mm -hmm. um, and he's going to continue execing as well Exciting. for that. So, you know, BBC Three has had a great heritage in bringing through talent and then they travel on. They seem to the people just do nothing. You know, they've done so well. Talent evolves and, yeah. it, and it moves on. So um, it's, I would say it, it's a launching pad for many people. Mm. And I think when you meet people, they say that, um, you know, BBC Three was really key in, in, in the path to their what they did next in mm. terms of creators. I know in terms of representation, you're also really keen on yeah. nations and regions type stuff. Yeah. Tell me about how you actually try yeah. that to happen. So that's the, that, that's the goes back again to the audience. So in, in there's, well, let me get this right. There's 16 million under 35s in the UK, 13 million in England, 1.3 million in Scotland, 600,000 in Wales, half a million in Northern Ireland. Those are the people we're trying to serve. Um, 
wages in London for that group are 700 quid. Nationally, they're 500 quid. In South End, they're under 500 quid. So that's the audience. That's the relevant. You, your stuff has got to be relevant to that kind of income bracket and experience. So we're working with, um, you know, the nation's commissioners and the nation's creators are actually just closer to their audience experience, you know, yeah. in terms of social, in terms of, you know, what's going on in their own area. They they live and breathe that. So to get closer to that audience, and yeah. by definition, that audience tends to be less well off because wages are lower um, out of the southeast. So we're doing, we're partnering with nations in different ways because, you know, Scotland has a channel, for example, that, that's going younger, but other nations don't. And Northern Ireland have a great support from Northern Ireland screen. And we're, you know, we have um, a pilot, uh, a cleaning show pilot, Filthy Dirty, that um, Northern Ireland screen have supported. And that's coming out of Northern Ireland. And, you know, that. There's just a lot of opportunities where we're all trying to reach the same audience, but actually the nation's producers are closer to that audience mm. than we are in Birmingham or London. So it's about working together. And it's about working back together. To yeah. yeah, yeah. And then BBC Three, because we have the third reel of I player, which is very valuable real estate, we can help give things um, bigger promotion and, you know, a big push on, on social as well. Mm. And are there any regional commissions you're particularly kind of proud of that sum up what you think those sort of regional and nations. Well, they're they're in the. Um, is it, we're doing a thing um, in Northern Ireland at the moment where um, Third Street Films were already making a sort of broader piece inside a Young Offenders Centre in Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. and then because we're having conversations, I I heard about that and I said, well, if you could keep filming in there because they had the access and all the men in there are you know under twenty five. Mm -hmm. um, could we do a you know a mini series out of there? So we're doing that that sort of shooting and editing at the moment, and it's pretty unflinching. Yeah. But uh, it's it's it, back to young men again. Mm. This yeah. leads on interestingly to my yeah. next question: What do you do, kind of personally, to make sure you are connected to your audience, be it young men or anyone else? Yeah. yeah, yeah. How, what, um, you know, how do you make sure you personally feel a connection with them? Uh, well, as of the seventy, roughly give or take members of staff at BBC Three, and it's one of the youngest, most diverse teams at the BBC, and probably one of the, the biggest uh, in-house teams that we have that's purely focused on that, that demographic. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of them is great because half are in Birmingham having a different experience than half are in London. So, you know, they are in charge of the development. They bring forward creators they, who they're interested in and, you know, we're going to do something with them. That's how Young Philly came through. Harry Pinheiro, we're going to do something with. And that comes from our young development team mm. anyway. Um, so th there's that. Also, as I say, literally people email me out of the blue and I spend far too long on Instagram. Sounds like a good thing for yes. the job, really. Yeah. Yes, I don't <laughs> watch TV. Or anything, yeah. And I'm um, thinking about kind of what, what you want to find next? Are there any sort of holes in terms of genre? Yeah, like I was thinking about this. Good fill. question. I was thinking about Thank this because people <laughs> want to know this. Um, I think um, an area that I'd, li I'd like to think about, but I haven't got the answer to, is there's lots of cross genre stuff that could be much more um, experimental and out there um, because we've been really focusing on big blocks of potentially returnable fact dents. And I just think, ooh, we could be doing a lot more um, sort of crazy cross-genre experimentation. And I don't get anything like that. I'm going to get lots of it now. Mm. But um, <laughs> and I'd, I'd, that could be quite interesting just to kind of... Be, because um, in terms of this value thing, I don't think too much about genres. Like, I don't think special factual documentary, popular factual. I don't think like that. I just think about... Um, what's the value, what's the appeal, why are people going to hook into it? And this sort of, you know, for, Hush Money is a bit like that, which we're piloting at the moment, which is a, a sort of um, a game, a horror game, horror game. Mm. So things like that, I sort of thought, mm, that's interesting. Yeah. So things like that. And we really hope to do more drama mm -hmm. um, as well. And we're always interested in comedy. The one, you know, comedy does a brilliant 
um, turn at bringing in under 35s to iPlayer yeah. over a long period of time. A really, really brilliant job at it. Great. Some good tips for all of you guys there mm. pitching. Um, let's move on to our next thing not to say to you, our next clip. I thought it was online. Why are there programmes on my TV now? She thought it was only online. Why is there BBC Three stuff on oh, my TV see. now? <clears throat> so that's the BBC One um, zone she's talking about. Um, I think, again, most people who I've met know that I, I'm purely focused on iPlayer. You know, what's going to work on iPlayer? Um, how to sell something best on iPlayer. Um, Dan, the controller of iPlayer is here. Hello, Dan. <laughs> um, Dan and I work very closely together. Um, drink a lot of tequila together. Um, and that's great because it's the power of BBC Three helping, helping iPlayer um, to be a success story. So I don't actually think too much about BBC One, just to make it clear. Um, so you might be arguing to a kind of for a return to terrestrial TV now that you've got that. No, I just sort of BBC think I, part of our innovation is we can do, you know, we can bend durations, we can bend the, the publication. So home time, you know, you can put it out as a box set. You've got a lot more flexibility. Um, the, B, what the, the good thing that BBC One does, it helps us drive to iPlayer. So, you know, we market BBC Three as come to iPlayer and that will come out loud and clear on the, the drag race marketing, which we've been spending a lot of time working on. But we can see that the BBC One effect does drive, does turn up iPlayer a bit. Um, and, you know, there's big numbers on BBC One and it's still, mm -hmm. it surfaces our content and adds to the conversation, if that makes. But it doesn't affect the way I think about what we should do. And our in-house teams don't think about that either. Like Naz, you don't think about BBC One, do you? No, no. Yesterday in... Um... <laughs> <laughs> in, um, in one of the sessions yesterday, yeah. we heard Asim Chowdhury say that Oh, the good yeah. thing about linear TV is that there's this togetherness, this yeah. watching together at the That's same really time thing. Point. Can BBC Three have that? Are you trying to create that moment in That's some kind really of way? That's really interesting. I think so. Two things to say. One, abused by my girlfriend, which was our most successful piece of factual since the channel went digital. It um, it did. Oh, let me get this right. Uh, 2 million on linear, 1.2 million on iPlayer, but it had a massive Twitter spike off linear that drove to iPlayer. So there is a sort of thing going on there that we haven't, we haven't figured out, but the moment of that linear mm. transmission drove a social conversation that mm. created a moment that then drove to iPlayer and kept going on iPlayer as people find it on social through their feeds. Mm. Ru uh, RuPaul, which uh, we're gonna, kick off on the 3rd um, of October will drop at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. on a Thursday night. And that's so people can have, you know, uh, if they want that night, you know, parties and get together. So to there do is it a moment at whatever. Kind of so make. I think we're, that will be really interesting. It's the first time, is that the first time Dan was on? First time. So that's the first time. We're, we're going to see, <laughs> we're going to be tuning in, get, getting all the wires out into the iPlayer brain to see, is that what people do? Or do they save it for the Friday night? Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out. Yeah, so I think that was a really interesting point um, that's being made, and I think that's exactly true because people still want to be able to share and chat about things mm. together, yeah, shared absolutely. moments. Let's move on to our next clip to put to you. Yeah. No one famous would ever be on BBC oh, Three. Stacey yeah, probably doing herself a disservice there. Yeah, no exactly. One would ever be um, on the I think this is a weird, weird question. So we've got Jesse. You've seen, um, you know, Reggie's coming to BBC Three to write something. At the moment, there's like, as I said, there's about three really significant people who we're in discussion with about doing great things, which we can't announce yet because we're still in conversation. <laughs> but um, you know. The point of, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race, there are some big names which have already been out, um, sort of guest judges on that. So I sort of think that's, um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really agree with that. And I, I find, interestingly, because of the creativity, because people can do whatever shape and whatever drop pattern, I find uh, when heads of development come in, they're really, they love having, talking to us because we kind of, Started making it up as we go along, and they love that chat about 
that flexibility it gives them. So, and I think that means we're getting offered really exciting big name mm. ideas because of that. You know, we have dry, um, Rap Game UK, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow, is it? Day after, I've lost what I have in Edinburgh. I can't remember what day it is. Um, and, um, you know, Crept and Conan and, and Target are presenting that and they are really good. And, you know, it's great that they've come to BBC Three to spend their time presenting those shows. Mm. You did a whole um, session on talent yesterday, so I'm just yeah. going to ask a little bit about that, but I don't want to cover the same ground. But I know you said yesterday that you talked about the talent. You guys have got having a spirit and a voice. Yeah. You want to kind of catch it as opposed to sort of molding them into a BBC yeah. Three mold. Tell me a bit about how you see what you're doing with the talent that you've, that you've I think got. it comes back to that idea of... Um, self-expression and shaping your identity and that's that's a sort of theme of of our content and being who you want to be and um so you know a lot of the people who are in our shows and also the contributors frankly like this will come through in rap game and in rupaul that's what very much the experience that they're living in mm -hmm. um so those are the people. So sometimes it, people come in and say, oh, we've got this great Instagram and we've got this many followers. And I'm kind of like, what? <laughs> and really what I want to know is what does this person say? What do they want to say? What are they trying to do? That's mm. the sell. Not the sell isn't they've got X many followers. Um, and that's, that's, what it's, that's what that voice thing is mm. all about. So another we're doing, Current Affairs are doing a piece um, this autumn with a woman called Elaine Chung. And she, again, she does work at the BBC, but she emailed me uh, months ago um, very passionately uh, about body image and portrayal in the Asian community and really and mm. really had a very strong take. And I thought, this is something we need to see and this, there's a gap. So she's mm. starting filming this this autumn and that's what it's all about, people's voice and what they wanna, what they wanna say. When you're talking to sort of influencers or creators mm. online um, thinking about working with them a lot of creators can do everything they can script yeah. and direct and produce and shoot and whatever is that a value to you do you want someone who can do everything or is that not important no because we've got we have the advantage of we have a great in-house team who can do so so much that it you know and it also becomes overwhelming for those people it's their voice it's their voice it's them it's what voice do they have that they want to collaborate with BBC Three on. That's the, the primary the primary thing because I'm kind of like always amazed, like, great, you want to come and work with us? That's great because mm. you want to bring your voice, you know, to partner with BBC Three. And um, and not everybody wants to do that and not everybody should, but that's that's what we're looking for. Mm. And if you think of careers of people like mm. Stacey Dooley and yeah. Phoebe Waller-Bridge and people who have done things on BBC Three and are also doing things on other channels yeah. now, do you see the channel as a stepping stone? And if you don't, do, how are you going to keep that talent? And stop I don't them think from moving on. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't keep the talent. It doesn't work like that. You, you know, it's it's great if people you know move on and you're because then the next batch comes in. Do you know what I mean? That's mm. you got to that got to make room for the next batch. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Let's go on to our yeah. next clip. No big shows come from BBC Three. It's only shit ones like those Ben Zan documentaries. <laughs> Um, so I think I'd go, go back to this idea of where, you know, the, this big family of returnable brands were trying to um, evolve and, you know, Glow Up did really well for us and is just finished casting the second series of that. And, you know, it was six million on iPlayer. It built through the series, which is what you want to see, that you're attracting, you know, an audience as, as you go. Mm -hmm. um, Eating with my ex. Uh, we've just in the edits with the second series it's the same thing big numbers um you know hot property you know rupaul you know we we haven't even started the show and i could bore you all to death with the the social um data on the attraction of people to that show already on mm. youtube and instagram you know these are big vehicles that are that people really care about and are passionate about and have fun with and they want to they will come because they want to enjoy them so i think um you know life on death row you know that that has a long tail it shows with a long tail is what builds a big show and um and stacy you know is is a brand mm. in herself now and on that note of big brands we've actually got mm. the first clip i think Woo! from drag race uk
Very Ooh, exciting. Very Woo! exciting. So, <laughs> there has been a lot of buzz about this on yeah. social, which is great. I think it's been number one on YouTube number, at some yeah, point. Yeah, yesterday was number oh, one on YouTube, yeah. Tell me a bit about what you're kind of doing to build up that excitement. Yeah, um, so obviously that's a very established sort of global brand already. For us, it's great because, you know, we've, it definitely feels very British. In, in itself in terms of um, the contributors and also the editorial, which obviously I won't get into, but it, it's very it's very British and very special. And um, we have, we've changed the way we're working on social um, and we're investing a lot in social production on set or in the production when it's happening. So not doing social further down the line. So we've have an absolute juggernaut of original social assets around this show, uh, which is nearly, you know, I think burnt out a few people along the way. But we're, um, it's gonna, it, it's already paying off. So, uh, Meet the Queens was uh, launched yesterday, and as I say, number one on YouTube yesterday, number two today. Um, on in terms of engagements on Instagram, it's the highest engaging Instagram channel of all youth. TV outlets in the UK. And this is just from releasing the Meet the Queens video. The show hasn't even started yet. And um, in terms of mentions uh, on, uh, on Twitter, it beats the Bake Off contestant reveal by a long way on Twitter mentions yesterday, which is, and there was 3.4 million <laughs> reached on social in two days um, and on YouTube, which is just, and this is, we haven't even started the show yet. And we've been watching this because the, the Instagram channel has been live for a while. Um, and that just shows you the appetite for that show and the fan base for that show. And literally everywhere I go, like I'm stuck on the tube, um, on a plane to Belfast, there's somebody watching RuPaul on, on their phone, which is, which mm. is really interesting. And um, it's just, I think it's just, it's going to be really interesting for us to see how the way people watch it mm. and um, and consume it, but it's and the other thing is like I end up watching films quite late at night uh, um, for people's edit deadlines, and if it's been a very long day, if I watch the Rue cuts, it just it literally just cheers you up. It's really great content for your mental health. So you want to kind of you want to build these big returning yeah. brands. It's, the benefits for you guys are obvious. It's yes. great fun for the viewers. But how can kind of producers with new ideas compete against these juggernauts if you're trying to build? Yeah, I would brands? say. Well, eating with my ex is a, is a good. I'm gonna I bang on about this, but it's it's good because it started. Nas started it in in Birmingham as short form, um, ten minutes old, wasn't it? In short form, and then you know we should we should I'll talk about that in more in a minute, and then from seeing the success of that and as on YouTube and that's when it, the decision was made to build it and develop it within the entertainment team into um, longer formats. So, you know, that's, that's an original one. Um, and that's, you know, what NAS is, is driving in Birmingham is that we have a family of, of projects at the moment that we start small, like maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, and we make one show, so just one night, which is still on iPlayer, is another one. We make one show, then we get to see how the format shapes, we get to see the talent, we can put it on iPlayer and actually see how it does, put it on YouTube and actually see how it does, look at the comments, and then that enables us to, to build it out into hopefully a series, <laughs> and then, you know, that's what's happened with, with my ex, and eating with my ex now is in series, on series two. Mm -hmm. So it isn't all, um, and there's other shows, you know, we're looking at at the moment to commission as this returning brand family won't be fixed forever. It, things will rotate mm, in and there's out. There's still space for movies. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Yeah. Let's go to our next uh, clip yeah. of things not to say to you. BBC Three never win any awards. <laughs> awards, awards, awards. What about the audience? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, Killed by My Debt um, has won loads of awards, you know, BAFTA, I mean, tons of awards. Super, Car Super Fam is on a shortlist for a Grierson's at the moment. Um, you know, I think Abused by My Girlfriend will be a strong contender. The other thing I'd like to say about Abused My Girlfriend, going back into the idea of value, last week we got a, an email in from, you know, a viewer saying, 
this abused by my girlfriend is about to go off iPlayer. This show has made such a difference to my, the life of me and my friends. That's Please great. leave it on iPlayer because we need it. We need this show. Mm -hmm. And like that's pretty amazing to get that kind of email, which we've extended it now on, on its availability on iPlayer. That's great. And that, for me, is the true actual value of a show when it's useful and valuable to people like that. Yeah. So I think, you know, for the awards, for the people who revel in awards, there'll be some coming. <laughs> and let's go to our final clip. Um... You know, they don't pay enough to make their programmes. Where well, it's a competitive market. <laughs> I would say, um, you know, I think we do pay a fairer tariff. As shows go on, people do, emails do come in and people in this room will know this, that we get an email to say, actually, something's gone wrong, something slid, da 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 da, da and we get an appeal for, you know, another injection. And, you know, we always look at that, and very often that, that seems to happen. And we try and work creatively with co-producers globally to, to pull in more money to get shows. You know, I haven't even started talking about the drama yet, mm -hmm. um, to get shows off the ground. So, you know, I think it's the beginning of a journey. When you're doing a pilot with us, that's when we obviously start small and it is lower budgets, but you're on a journey to try and build something big, which, you know, is what happened with Eating With My Ex, mm. for example. And are you looking at different ways of funding programmes? Because I know you've got um, Normal People, which we'll see yes. a clip from, which was a collaboration with Hulu, and you also did Starstruck with HBO Max. Is that yes. something for the future in terms of pairing together? De definitely interesting because um, it enables us to, to do more content and it gives the creatives you know the budget that they feel they they need to to achieve their their vision um you know we're also doing in the drama space red rose which is a sort of horror drama mm -hmm. set in bolton um which was appealing to me a teenage cast teenage story sort of quite a dark story about you know growing up and being, you know, being who you want to be in your own hometown, which when it's quite challenging, the Clarkson twins are from there and they said, you know, it's a love letter to their, their hometown. Mm -hmm. And it's right, exactly in the right demographic. Because the one key point I said is, although we're under 35s and we're measured under 35, creatively, we're very much focused on 25s and under, which everybody, you know, more or less knows now. So we do cast 27 year olds, but really it's all about the 25 and under experience. Mm. And that's just trying to be super focused on the audience appeal that we're trying to be noticed for. But yeah, the um, on the drama front and on the, the Rose Matafeo um, piece that's coming up as well, you know, that the, on the which is coming out of comedy, that, you know, getting international partners is, is, always, is always useful. So we have those conversations all the time too. Yeah. Um, we've got another first, which is the first clip from Normal People, which is the drama adapting the Sally Rooney book, which I'm a big fan of. <laughs> yeah, so that's Excited. great to have, you know, yeah. That's going to be big. <laughs> yeah, like that, you know, that book obviously is such a, such a hit and Sally's, you know, amazing to have her. Again, that is a big name, you know, a big, definitely a big title that's with BBC mm. Three and... Um, that's that's great, and I went to the read through for that, and that's partnered with Hulu. Very young cast, very set in that sort of school college experience, so that's that's really great for us. We're coming towards the end, but I just wanted mm. to sort of look ahead to what's yeah. next. Is there sort of one big call out you want to make in terms of what you really want in terms of content and pitches? Ooh, I've mentioned young men, haven't I? <laughs> yep, several times. Um, <laughs> what's more, young men? Um, I would say, what would I say? Um, in for it's these returnable formats that have that have value and that could become you know series two, series three, series four, in that have fun space, mm. um, and then you know uh, there's that, and then there's definitely comedy. Comedy mm. is is so important um, and I know it, it's 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 difficult but um, I'm working very closely with Shane and Kate um, endless conversations about possibilities there great very exciting I'm now going to turn to our iPad because you've been submitting questions so thank you very much uh, first one you're going to like Fiona where is your fabulous top from <laughs> very important stuff everybody knows I won't answer them everybody knows I should have yeah, <laughs> I spend far too much time on fashion shit. She looks fabulous. Yeah, fashion shit. Yeah. Fashion well, bitch. Yeah. Um, are you surprised that no other linear channel has gone completely digital? Discounting your um, lot. 
Yeah, I think though there's no point in going digital unless you've got a uh, you know a platform that you can push your content through. There's no point going digital on third-party platforms, mm. for example. Yeah. So um, that all depends on their their commercial ideas for their own platforms. So yes and no. It suits us. Got a good one here. How much did you have to fight for Drag Race? Oh, it was already there, thanks to Kate Phillips when I arrived. I think Kate had to fight a little bit, maybe. Well, he wasn't really doing big entertainment at the time. Yeah. So, um, but we always, just thought it would be, and it's more of a story putting it on the BBC. So, yeah, yeah I sort of wore, wore everyone down, but actually, <laughs> Fiona sort of got it yeah. straight away. And actually now, it, it, it just feels, and it, it feels great being on the BBC. It feels great, yeah. It's really, really great. So, no, it was there. That's what I mean, everything's an evolution. You don't just change everything. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, and it's very much arrived. So yes. there we go. Yes. Um, that is going to be all from us, but I want to thank our sponsor, Broadcast Commission Index. And Fiona, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.